Hello and welcome to the universe and to another short and sweet story from the dark times, an era no TARDIS should ever travel to, until now, as in the latest Doctor Who magazine we get the return of the Ninth Doctor, Rose Tyler and some familiar and fanged faces. This is the comic Monstrous Beauty Part 1, an adventure which sets the scene with the 2005 TARDIS team, back on the pages of DWM in issue 556, as part of the Time Lord Victorious event. In this quick video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on this comic, discussing everything from panels to print, and if it's worth the purchase. So let's get started with some spoilers ahead. The pages of Doctor Who magazine have always been crammed full with everything from fact files to interviews and bursting with creativity with comic stories that nurtured Doctor Who fans through the years into a love of rich and dynamic stories. This story brings back a pairing who haven't been printed on the famous pages for years, the Ninth Doctor and Rose Tyler. This pair only held the TARDIS keys for a year, but in that time they made an impact that continues to the present day. Before the Timeless Child, there was the Time War, before the Hybrid, there was Hendrix Department Store, and before the Big Bang 2, there was Bad Wolf. The comic sees the no-nonsense Norvna and the Rose with her charm and fawns travel into the universe in its infancy, when the Time Lords weren't Time Lords, no one knew what a TARDIS even was, and vampires were real. As a narrative, it's a fantastic premise, with the panel showing off everything you'd want from the darker times. The action is more animated, the explosions intense, and the creatures and even sentient spacecraft are scary to look at. The writing from Scott Gray matched by the art of John Ross, who previously worked on adventures featuring this TARDIS team, bring their talents back to the table, with the character's dialogue, tone and similarities captured well across the majority of the adventure, from the subtlest of mannerisms to the appearance, transporting me back to those days as a kid, reading comics and watching the mysterious alien and down-to-earth teenager fighting foes and angering aliens. The aliens in question for this story are great, with everything from a huge bat creature, blood fueled ships and vampires that make Van Helsing jump. Their speech sinister, and the terrible trio at the end childish and innocent, until something new arrives. Now these creatures may be living in a time before records began, but they have made their way into the show's stories before, in a 1980 serial titled State of Decay, where great vampires struggled to survive and the Doctor told tales of their wars waged against the weary, until a race bolder than their bloodlust stood up to them, the Gallifreyans. Now for all this action and excitement, the plot has pros and cons, with certain frames repetitive, and the way Rose is always the damsel in distress every few pages, whilst the Doctor takes punches and smirks a bit. It doesn't quite sit right amongst the richer and more interesting story itself, and ties itself to the tropes of comics. Moving past the stereotypes, I'm sure it would create a much more interesting adventure. Isn't Medicus Andracam? an odd character too. His intent and actions in aiding the Doctor seems strange with little explanation as to why he would help the Doctor, when our Time Lord has no desire to stop the vampires, and interfering in history, his history. The people he lost and he will lose, either then, in the past, or now in the future, is not a sacrifice I can see the Doctor making for his already plagued mind. Could he really add more to his already immense survivor's guilt, just to gain a medic's approval, but ultimately to save his friend? Now, a little change I would have loved to have seen would have been the Doctor befriending a guard watching the pair in their cell, the two joking about Gallifrey's past and future respectively, and then the guard faces the ultimate and is killed, sowing the seeds of the Time Lord Victorious planting the power that the Katuru have unleashed. Instead, we get this angry drunk medic and an enraged Time Lord in the making, Razalon. Razalon, a twist that I did not see coming, one of the three founders of Gallifrey, higher society and technological advancements, as well as matters tactical and military based. This is not Razalon the Redeemer or the Resurrected, this was a rage fueled Razalon who feared death more than ever, and it was new to the universe. It was strange and explained, and that made it even more terrifying to her, but also a weapon that could be wielded. The president in the past was blunt and violent, worn and weathered, and a character as arguably scary as the feared fanged forces in their castle. The story follows all of the traditional narrative theories you'd expect from an episode, but on a more action-packed and vibrant sense of scale. It opens our eyes to a forbidden time in the universe, and shows the Doctor and Rose's level of fear matched, as the two enter the unknown in pages that push you to read more, each panel full of colour and creativity. The world crafted by the team brings a sense of unique darkness to the scary spectacle of Doctor Who, with the characters cunning and actions primal, and defensive from conversation to confrontation. It's definitely worth a read if you're a fan of the series 1 of the revived show, it's a fitting fairy tale to read as we enter the spookier time of year, the TARDIS team up we've always wanted more of with added vampires. This isn't Twilight, instead it's a comic that shines. Thank you very much for watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to know when I'm releasing new content and help the channel grow. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.